Oh, this one is gonna blow your actual mind. Hi guys and welcome to week 3 of December, which as you already know, is STYLE STUDY TIME! <laughs> Uh, this week we're going to take a look at a style that is very different to how I usually paint But you already know that we love a good challenge on this channel In today's style study we're going to dive deep into the super cool semi-realistic manga art of Lars Degenhardt Better known by his online name Laoban I don't know how but apparently this video has only been requested one time there must be something wrong with YouTube Studio because I looked in my comments and I cannot find any other requests. But anyway, massive thank you to Heart of Darklight for requesting this video and to my wonderful patrons for picking this out of a list. If this is your very first style study, please listen to this intro, it is very crucial. But if you are a style study veteran, first of all, thank you for coming back. I love you and you can go ahead and skip to part one. Timestamps, as always, are in the video description. But if you're new here, hi! Welcome! I am so glad you're here because today we're gonna level up your art. Style Study is a regular series we do here on my channel where we take a look at some of our favourite contemporary artists, analyse their work and see what we can learn from it. Keyword, learn. I say this every time, but we're not here to plagiarise or copy anyone's work. We're here to learn some cool techniques and see how we can apply them to our own original style. I usually structure my style studies in three parts. In part one, we'll take a look at Lars's work, analyse his style and see what we can learn from it. Part two will be a study of one of his original paintings. The reference I've chosen today is this one. And in part three, we'll apply everything that we learned today to an original painting of our own. And yes, this week we actually do have an original painting of our own. If you guys enjoyed this video and learned something today, then please remember to like, subscribe and share. And if there are any other artists you'd like to see in a style study in the future, please feel free to leave them in a comment below. Alrighty, whenever you're ready, grab a snack, sit back and let's dive into another style study featuring Laoban. Lars Degenhardt is a 29-year-old artist and art YouTuber from Germany. According to his wiki, while he did go to art school, he tends to be quite critical about it, and he has a twin brother who is also an artist. I'm scared to think what those Christmas shopping lists look like. Although he originally focused on watercolour portraits, over time, he centred his content around digital art, and a lot of his work has a ton of homoerotic subtext for which we are all grateful and by we I mean every one of us who grew up in the tumblr oh, fandom God, age but if you've watched other style studies you know that Lars's art is unlike most of the other art that we've looked at for a bunch of reasons and I'm actually really excited to dive into something new and different this week his beautiful character portraits have garnered him over 770,000 subscribers here on YouTube and over 240,000 followers over on Instagram. Like you've seen already, Lars's work would probably be categorised as semi-realistic manga character art focused on male or masculine characters for the most part. And in a world where the majority of stylized art is focused on feminine characters, this has likely presented a ton of challenges and I think we really need to appreciate the fact that Lars has made it this big on social media, it's absolutely amazing. I think the biggest strength of his work lies in how he creates so much appeal through the anatomy and rendering of his characters because here's the thing Lars doesn't paint boys well I suppose he does but it's not that he just paints boys he paints extremely buff muscly boys with perfect skin and an anime face and all of these things have a very specific audience and he really plays on the appeal of the ideal masculine form that has a lot of people weak in the knees because when it comes to art it looks like he's a bit of a sensual list. No! Speaking of lists, here are four key characteristics to Lars's art. The 
very first thing you want to understand when it comes to Lars's work is just what makes something look traditionally masculine. When we've looked at feminine characters before, we've seen that their design almost always includes a lot of rounded curves, smooth spherical forms, and few areas of extremely hard edges, if any. So it stands to reason that to make a form more traditionally masculine, you'd have to go to the other extreme with sharp corners, more planar forms, lots of angles and very strong contrast. So you'll see that although the eyes are big and wide as is common in manga, they are by no means round. You'll almost always see an angle in the upper and lower eyelids, particularly on characters that are supposed to look grown up. And although the nose is minimized, again a common thing in most manga art, it is still angular and sharp. However, while a lot of manga artists also minimize the mouth, Lars actually does a couple of interesting things. First off, you'll notice that while he does give the lips some form, he doesn't necessarily give them color. So here, if you look at a profile shot of the face, the lips do have some thickness and depth. They have like a 3D form. However, they're the same exact color as the skin around them. The other unique characteristic is that the mouth is usually super wide, especially in the more masculine characters, and even the smile line is often less of a curve and more of a soft angle. And in a lot of portraits, the characters are smiling with their teeth showing, and the teeth tend to have very defined, noticeable canines. You've probably already guessed why he does this, but in case you haven't, it is in order to create a predatory appearance. In fact, a lot of other features subtly hint towards this. For one, there is a lot of space between the eyes and the mouth, meaning the eyes are set pretty high up on the face. This is like the antithesis of the usual stylization rules, where artists will usually place the eyes quite low on the face. Having the eyes higher up creates an illusion of maturity. Then you have the eyebrows which, instead of being round and fluffy, are actually super angular and arched, often angled downwards in the center of the face, creating an angry or maybe a mischievous expression, no matter what the rest of the face is doing. And as we move further down, you'll see that the body is actually super muscly without being bulky. So while you have strong defined shoulders, they aren't massive. While you have very strongly edged abs, the waist is skinny and sleek. And whether you consciously notice this or not, our subconscious gets a very specific cue from this body type, because not only do they appear strong and fierce, they also appear agile and fast, kind of like some of the apex predators on our planet. And all of this has a very specific appeal because these characters represent what, to a lot of people, is the most attractive trope, the quintessential bad boy. Your Draco Malfoys and your Dean Winchesters and your Lokis, all of these characters may not have been the biggest, most muscular, manly men, but they had a certain rugged exterior that made us all crave a toxic relationship. And I can promise you, if you look at their promo pictures, every one of these characters has similar features to Lars's paintings, regardless of whether they are painted in a manga style or not. The most common lighting setup in the vast majority of Lars' work is this bright ambient light plus an even brighter diffuse key light. And then you may or may not have a super intense rim light and so on, but these two are the most important ones because they determine the shadows. However, the key light here is quite diffused. What does that mean? Well, when you look at the rendering, you'll see that the shadows are rarely hard edged and any hard edged shadows are actually quite caused by the ambient light, not the key light. The key light usually hits from above the character, causing noticeable ambient occlusion shadows on the planes of skin that point downwards, but pretty much all of these shadows are blended right into the rest of the midtone. Coming to the lighter shadows caused by the ambient light though, you'll see that these are the hard edged ones and they usually lie at the harder plane shifts. So you'll see these shadows under each ab muscle or as a cast shadow around the nose. 
Notice how these are the flatter shadows, wherein they actually look like one solid color. Kind of like if you created a lasso selection and filled it in with the bucket tool. When it comes to the actual bright tones, it is the same story. The ambient lights create fairly flat planes and hard edges, whereas the key light acts as this diffused brightness on the upward facing planes of the face and the body. In simpler terms, the ambient light creates definition, while the key light creates a glow. One little color note I want to mention here, and this applies to most of his work but not all of it, but a lot of the times the colors on the character are exactly what you would expect them to be, as in the characters themselves aren't really affected by the colors around them. In other words, there is often no hue changes caused by bounce light from the environment. This is a super subtle technique that causes these characters to look like they're completely unaffected by their surroundings, again really pushing that thick, rugged, bad boy exterior. So this is where things start to get a little tricky, so if you need to pause and collect yourself, do so now. Yeah, wipe the drill off your chin, look sharp now. When we look at how Lars paints muscle tone, there is something about the rendering that makes the skin look so sculpted, almost like these men were carved out of clay. And there are a couple of reasons why you feel that way. First of all, there is practically no hue variation. All of the skin is skin toned and you don't really see a bunch of hue variation. A great contrast to this is the work of Nixu or even Ruanjia, whom we looked at last week. See how they use a ton of hue shifts in the skin, which gives this super painterly realistic look? In comparison, Lars uses very few hue shifts, and the ones he does use are so subtle, you pretty much don't even consciously notice them. And this causes you to feel like the skin is rather opaque, because there are no colors peeking through, and therefore, it probably isn't skin at all, but it's probably clay or marble. But when it comes to the rendering, here's a pattern that I notice. With each muscle in the center of the body, so your pecs and your abs and obliques, Lars appears to follow a pattern of thirds. Starting at the pecs, which are the closest to the key light, you'll see that the shadow is a very narrow sliver at the lower third of each pectoral muscle. The upper two thirds are mid-tone with an airbrushed key light in the center. Then, as we make our way down to the upper and middle abs, you'll see that the highlight is on the upper third of the muscle, the mid-tone on the middle third, and the shadow, while localized to the lower third, is starting to blend into the mid-tone a little. And as you go to the lower abs, the highlight is a sliver on the upper edge of the muscle, while the rest of the muscle is a dark mid-tone blending into a shadow color. Essentially, the roles are reversed from the pecs down to the lower abs. So there, now you know how to paint super sculpted abs like Lars does. You're welcome. Here's the thing. Look at Lars's entire body of work. I find that there is a sliding scale between super manga-esque art and more semi-realistic stuff. In either case though, line art is a huge part of his style, though it often shifts between super visible and super subtle. In the face, you'll pretty much see all the lines you see in traditional manga, so there is definition around the eyes and the nostrils and just an indication of the separation between two lips. There is a solid line at the jaw and the hair is cell shaded with each lock of hair getting its own outline. Where things change, however, is with the body. In the arms and legs, you'll see these solid, long, fluid lines that outline every curve and angle in the silhouette. You'll even see a bit of hatching in the more bony sockets to indicate a bit of hollowness. But as you get closer to the center of the body in the more fleshy, meaty bits, the lines get tighter, shorter, and more choppy. So instead of having one long, fluid line from collarbone to belly button, it is a series of little lines that wrap around each abdominal muscle or a bunch of little divots by the ribs. Plus, when it comes to the more semi-realistic dimensional end of the spectrum, there is another dimension to the line art, and that is the value. When we look closer at this type of rendering, we see that both the lines in the face and the longer, more solid lines in the extremities are quite dark, usually a very dark brown, if not black. 
but as we get closer to the center of the body, especially around the linear alba, the lines are pretty much just a shade or two darker than the surrounding skin, such that they kind of blend right into the shading. There are pretty much no specular highlights in the face, but you will see some highlights in the belly. What does this do? Well, my confused friend, all of this adds another layer to the bad boy trope. You see, with all these dark, harsh lines in the extremities, you get a sense of a rough exterior. But as you come closer to the core, it is all softer and smoother and more tender. And as human beings, we all have this instinct of wanting to rescue people from their own demons. We want to save people from this cruel world and nurture that soft, kind, happy place deep inside them that they've been forced to keep locked away. The only thing we love more than a bad boy is a bad boy with a tender heart and a soft underbelly. So to sum up part one, here are four key characteristics to Lars's art. Number one, while on the surface the characters seem deeply rooted in manga, Lars specifically enhances the masculinity by using a lot of hard edges and sharp angles, really playing into the thrill of a dark character that is rough around the edges. Two, he uses a diffuse key light to go with a bright ambient light, wherein the ambient light creates defined shadows while the key light creates a diffused glow. In either case, however, the colors on the characters are mostly unaltered by their surroundings, further pushing the idea that nothing can break through their tough exterior. Number three, Lars uses a specific order of placing the highlights, midtones, and shadows that cause the skin, particularly the abs, to look extremely sculpted. The lack of noticeable hue variations makes the skin look rather opaque, almost as if it's not skin at all, but rather it's clay. And number four, he uses solid, dark, fluid, and long lines at the extremities, particularly on the character's silhouette, and softer, shorter, more subtle lines at the center of the character. This creates a subconscious perception of a tough exterior, while the character's core is softer and a lot more tender. For the study today, here is the reference that I've chosen, and I very specifically chose this one because it lies at the more cartoony end of the spectrum. I figured we'd do this one now and then do a semi-realistic type painting for part three, and that way we're covering a lot more style in one video. Although let me tell you, I actually learned a lot from this one study, and it started right at the beginning with the sketch. You already know I love iterative sketching, so I put down a super rough sketch to begin with then lower the opacity and create a new layer on top and then I draw in a second cleaner iteration of it. Right away I realized that the eyes, while they look pretty big, are actually supposed to be fairly small because as we go further into the painting you'll see that I ended up tweaking them to be quite a lot smaller. There is the illusion of big eyes but they're not actually crazy big, rather there's a lot of um, guy liner. It's basically thick pointy edge lines on the upper and lower lash lines that, along with a bit of shadow on both the upper and lower eyelids, give this illusion illusion of really wide, narrow, angular eyes, while in fact the eyes themselves are pretty small. And as you can clearly tell, I spent entirely too long trying to get every single line in the hair identical to the reference. Did I have to do this? No. Is anyone gonna look closely as if this were a spot the difference type puzzle? Of course not. Did I do this specifically so I could procrastinate on all the other paintings that I was supposed to finish up this week? Maybe, but you didn't hear that from me. However, one thing I will say is that once I had the lines nice and bold and clean, the rendering process was actually an absolute breeze. Like this painting took about 3 hours and 49 minutes, of which the first hour and 40 minutes were just line art. Just for context, in a regular painting that I do in my own style, the sketch takes up maybe about half an hour, so this felt never ending until I got the lines down and then boom, it was done like a second later. For the majority 
of the skin rendering, I ended up switching between a line art brush and an eraser, putting down super flat shadows and only really using a blender for the teeth and the irises. With the hair, the main brushes I used were Krita's equivalent of my magic brush, which is just a flat round hard edge brush with opacity and flow map to pressure, and I sometimes used a sketch pen brush that is basically the magic brush with a bit of added pressure size dynamics. I found that the hair was actually kind of concentric loops of brightness. Well, I guess you can't really call it loops, but like, okay, so you have a flat dark lock of hair. Inside that lock, you have a flat shape, which is just a little bit brighter. And inside that, you have another flat shape, which is even brighter. And sometimes the middle shape blends into the shadow, but almost never into the highlight. I, of course, did switch to Photoshop for the liquify tool, which I pretty much always do, and I also ended up picking an airbrush set to soft light and with a pale grey colour, added a bit of brightness around the crown of his head, and especially in his shoulders and the upper pictorial area. I found that Lars often paints clothing, especially undershirts, to almost look like they're painted onto the skin. So it's like the same form as the skin, but a different color. So that was interesting. All in all, I definitely really enjoyed playing with this style and I'm actually pretty happy with how the study turned out. Alrighty, so the original painting for this week was actually my favourite of the two, probably because it was closer to my comfort zone. Like I said, the study was more manga 2D style, which was nice, but I'm less a line art person and more a rendering type person. You guys who have watched me for a while already know this. Plus, any excuse to draw a hot guy, right? So, as with the study, I started first with a super rough sketch and then lowered the opacity for that and made a cleaner sketch on a new layer. As you can clearly tell, I fell into the same trap of making the eyes way too big and round to begin with, but I quickly realized my mistake while still in the sketching phase, so I lasso selected and resized each eye individually. Remember, we want to go masculine and angular. At this stage, I wasn't too fussed about having bold, clean lines, because I decided to do a proper set of lines at the end with a lazy brush on, so after I had a relatively neat sketch, I went straight in with the Bezier Select tool and filled in some flat. With the rendering, I had to remember that the hard shadows are pale while the darker shadows are more diffuse. Plus, with the pecs and the abs, I had to go back to the script and make sure I was painting the right proportions of midtone and shadow. Obviously, I'd imagine after doing this a fair few times, you would learn the shading technique and could rely on muscle memory, but this was my first time painting a body like Lars does. The point I'm trying to make is that you will never not need to study how other artists paint. In fact, as someone who's been painting for over 10 years now, I find that with every passing year, I'm looking for more and more artists to study and learn from because every artist brings a completely new game-changing perspective to the art world. So honestly, where possible, I highly encourage you to watch other artists paint. Lord knows I do it all the time. With the hair, I actually found it really helped to clean up the edge of each tone because it gives you that flat but still dimensional appearance. I also gave the tone some hair stroke type edges and then went in and flattened about half of said hair strokes to balance everything out. And finally, I used a line art brush with quite heavy stabilization to redo the line art with a more conscious approach. Again, you want to remember the colors, the lines in his arms and hands and silhouette are going to be way darker, whereas the lines at the center of his core are going to be pretty much invisible. Fun fact, I was actually watching an old Drew Gooden video about Vin Diesel and how cringy he is. So here is this week's original painting, Diesel. And there we have it, Lavan Demystified. 
Thanks so much again to Heart of Darklight for requesting this video and to my lovely patrons for picking this out of the list. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and learned something today and that it's been everything you've been looking for. And if the rest of you guys have enjoyed this as well, then please remember to like, comment, subscribe and share. It really helps the channel out so, so much. And if there are any other artists you'd like to see a style study on in the future, leave them in a comment below and I'll add them to my ever-growing list. As always, if you want to say hi, please come check me out on Instagram and Discord. And if you'd like to support the channel directly and grab exclusive ad-free content every single week, please come check out my Patreon. All of the links are always in the video description. As always, thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. If this is your very first style study, you can find the playlist to the rest of them up here. Feel free to binge them. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.